I decided that I want to know for sure what food sensitivities I have and what effect they have on me. And I was shocked by the results. So I found a high quality yet affordable food sensitivity test online and I decided to buy one. For me, I struggle with a lot of bloating, uncomfortable bowel movements, uh, just stuff like that. I'm pretty sure I low-key have IBS and I don't know, just getting the vibe that my gut health is not up to par. And was I right <laughs> with this test? It definitely told me that I was right about that. So I'm glad that I did it. But that was my whole reasoning behind wanting to get one of these tests. The company is called Check My Body Health and they're actually Canada's most comprehensive sensitivity test. So I thought, hey, let's give it a go. This test does not only provide really great information about what food sensitivities you have, but also information about your gut health. So your bacteria levels there, uh, also digestive enzymes, your vitamin levels, and other sensitivities you have that are non-food related. The process was very simple. I purchased one of their tests and then I received a redemption code and I had to mail them hair samples and it took around a couple of weeks for me to get the results. Before we get into my results and I show you all the good stuff, let's talk about what a food sensitivity is. Food sensitivity refers to your body having a tough time digesting a certain food. Having a food sensitivity is different than having a food allergy. With a food sensitivity, you can have uncomfortable symptoms. The symptoms that can result from a sensitivity can be bloating, bowel movement changes, headaches, and fatigue. A food allergy can cause life-threatening symptoms, whereas a food sensitivity may just be uncomfortable and cause other kinds of symptoms. So they are two completely different things, which is important to note. My main goal with all of this is to to improve my gut health. Gut health has become an increasingly popular subject over the last few years, I felt for sure. I see a lot of TikToks, videos, things like that on how to improve your gut health, bloating, what's healthy for digestion, things like that. And while these videos are good and they can be helpful, it's hard because everybody is different. So I wanted to know what mine would be and how I can successfully improve my own gut health because it's imperative for living a long and healthy life. So now that we know a bit of a background as to what a food sensitivity is and my reasonings behind why I wanted to do this test, let's just dive right into my results because they were pretty interesting, not gonna lie. So let's take a look. It's really cool. They give you either a green dot, a yellow dot, or a red dot, depending on what your sensitivity level is. So green means good, uh, yellow is a moderate sensitivity, and red is a high sensitivity. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So looking at cheese, you know what's interesting? Gluten containing cereals and grains, everything was green for me. And I thought, I suspected I had some sort of gluten intolerance or sensitivity, but I actually don't, this is showing. So let's go carbs. Now all cheeses and dairy, I was pretty much good for. I only had a moderate sensitivity to Gouda, which I'm not the biggest fan of anyway, so it's okay. Now let's go to the high sensitivity foods and drinks, hot chocolate which is so interesting because I love chocolate. I'm a huge chocolate gal. These results kind of led me to the hypothesis of if you eat something in kind of excess, like if you eat too much of something, could you possibly develop a sensitivity to it? Because homegirl definitely loves her chocolate and her hot chocolate, but high sensitivity to hot chocolate, tequila, kidney beans, soya bean, hazelnut, fish sauce, oyster sauce, vegetable oil, and button mushroom. Quite interesting and the moderate sensitivity was to gouda, like I said, cashew milk, black coffee, hazelnut milk, lager, leisure, I don't know what that is. I think it's a type of beer or something, I don't know. Field pea, navy bean, chicken, chicken. Why chicken? I love chicken. Milk chocolate, pecan, nut, and clams. Okay, quite interesting there. So again, like I said, I'm a huge chocolate gal. Maybe I've just been eating too much of it and my body's like, I can't take this anymore. Don't drink your chocolate. Don't eat your chocolate. Don't eat your Nutella with the hazelnuts. <laughs> All right. What really stood out to me was the chicken for moderate sensitivity. Chicken is my go-to source of protein. I just find it easiest to cook with and deal with. Steak is just, mm. if you've seen my Living Like Eddie Hall for a day video, you know I do not know how to cook or deal with beef that well. So 
Yikes. It also tells you what vegan products you have a sensitivity to. I only had a moderate sensitivity to falafel, which I don't really eat, so that's all good. Now, let's go to the non-food sensitivities. This was really interesting. I have like high sensitivity to a bunch of different flowering plants, grasses and herbs, shrubs, trees, which makes a lot of sense because I literally had to go, I, I mentioned this in some of my previous videos where I sounded horrible because of my allergies, which you may remember, but I had to go on a literal steroid puffer because my allergies got so bad at one point. I have asthma too. So all that outside stuff was just really messing me up. It was just hitting me in the wrong direction, but you know, so this confirmed that. So I know this is accurate because I deal with a lot of these allergies and sensitivities, right? So awesome, possum. Why did I just say that? That's horrible. What else is interesting is reactivity to metals. So I don't have a high reactivity to any, but I have a moderate reactivity to cadmium and ruthenium. And what's interesting is there's a key at the end of this where it tells you where these metals are found. So the cadmium one I looked up and it was found in rechargeable batteries, which is interesting. Because like, isn't your phone a rechargeable battery? Yes, it is, right? You know, maybe just a constant exposure to these kinds of batteries and metals could be alluded to that. I don't know, These are this is my interpretation of the results and kind of what I'm hypothesizing. Feel free to make your own, you know, hypotheses and put them in the comments below, please. And thank you. Now, the other one was the nutrient. I am outside of the range, which means my mineral or nutrient level in my body falls below the normal range. So not good. And I had quite a few. I have to look up what foods have these sorts of things and start to incorporate more of them into my regular eating habits. Look at the vitamins, the vitamins. Low levels of vitamin B5 and B9, which is crazy because I take a vitamin B complex every day. What's really cool about this is it shows you a whole list of all the foods that you can find these kinds of vitamins in, which is awesome. So you don't have to go looking up, oh, how can I get this? It's all right in this 65 page PDF for you. Now, what's really cool is there's a whole part on additives analysis. So what are additives? They are added to food to either preserve it, to enhance the taste, the smell, the flavor, all that stuff, make it last longer on the shelf. And essentially they're chemicals and they're not the best for us. So there's some that I do have sensitivities to, different kinds of antioxidants, emulsifiers, stabilizers, preservatives. What's interesting, so they all have a number like E and then followed by three digit number. So for example, E310 is an antioxidant I have a high reactivity to. Now what's awesome is they give you a whole website to go to with a database of all the branded products that have these additives. So E310 is propyl gallate. It's a synthetic antioxidant. So again, a chemical. So now if I click on that, wow, this is an awesome website. So the origin, it tells you where it's from. It tells you the function and what products it is. Oh, it says it's restricted in foods, widely used in cosmetics. That's interesting. Wow. But I'm really excited to look more into this. Maybe I'll do like a separate video more into the details about these kinds of products and the results of when I actually do the elimination diet, which I'll get to later in this video on what that is. My inner scientist is coming through like, wee, this is awesome. What's the key to all this is the gut health analysis. Now this is really, really shocking to me. They give you a low or a normal, so they assess each strain of bacteria as either it's falling below the normal range or it's in the normal range. Every single strain of bacteria has been falling below the normal range for me. I had no idea. I thought, you know, one or two may be low. All of them, you guys, all of them are low. That is shocking to me. And I'm really glad I found that out now because that's gonna affect me down the line if I don't fix that. Wow! Wow, I'm so annoying, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. And with digestion health, you need those enzymes. There was three of them that were low for me, amylase, lipase, and pepsin. So that is not good. It's, it's really not. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at, you know, the gist of my results, I wanna talk about what the elimination diet is now. All right, let's talk elimination diet, how it works, what is it, and all the steps involved. 
The main goals of this diet is to really understand what foods cause you certain symptoms that you don't want to be feeling. So if there's certain foods that are making you feel lethargic, sluggish, or just bring your energy down, give you bloating, the symptoms you don't want, then you'll know because of the steps involved, which is really cool. So essentially it, the elimination diet lasts around four weeks and you're going to completely eliminate all the foods that you have a moderate or high sensitivity to. And you can freely eat from the foods that you have no reactivity to. Now that's the elimination phase that lasts for four weeks. Then you move on to the reintroduction phase and here you bring one item in at a time and monitor the symptoms for the next two days. So let's say, you know, I'm like, I want to start eating chicken again. So I'm going to bring that in and then monitor my symptoms for two days. Now, what's really cool is they give you a reintroduction diary where you can note the food and drinks that you're consuming with any symptoms. So a really great way to be able to track it. After this elimination diet, which is pretty much the whole purpose of this entire test is to be able to have clarity on what foods work well for you, what foods don't work well for you, which ones provoke those kind of symptoms that you don't like on a day to day. And at the end of the day to have good gut health and to be healthy and happy overall. What was really interesting to me is that I didn't have a high reactivity to any gluten or non-gluten wheats or grains and any dairy except for gouda because I thought for sure, you know, you hear all the time, gluten causes bloating, it's bad for you, dairy's bad for you, all these things. But this just goes to show you how different we are from person to person. We all have completely different DNA. My boyfriend actually did this test as well and his results were completely different from mine. So yes, you know, some things can be helpful on there on just general standards of good gut health, digestion, there are some good principles that are foundational. But when it comes to things like, oh, you know, I see all the time, dairy's not good for you. You know, it's causing bloating. How to get that flat stomach and how to not bloat. That is going to be great for that person. That's awesome. But the main thing I want to show you guys in this video is how different we all are. And just because something works for one person doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work well for you. Yeah, I'm really excited to start this elimination diet. As I said, if you guys are interested in seeing the results of the elimination diet and how it goes, I get some positive responses. Even if, even if just one of you guys are interested in that video, I will fully make it for you. It was really interesting to see that those bacteria strains were low. All of them were low for me, which is really scary and good to know. The video that's going to pop up right here on the screen is going to be my dopamine detox video where I didn't have any sugar or any dopamine for 24 hours. The results were actually amazing. I hope that you guys have a killer day. Bye!